What's going on YouTube? Fuzzy Wuzzy here, playing with my old crusty 2001 Explorer Sport. Pretty much my four-wheel drive doesn't work. It's It works sometimes, it's spotty, you turn the switch, you can hear the solenoids clicking in the little corner there in the passenger side footwell. Common problem, I think that control module is going out. I've been looking at the pick apart, I can't find one. They're always gone because it is a common problem. So I'm just swapping to a manual transfer case. I'm tired of dealing with all this. I'm just going to cut a hole in the floor, put a stick in it, and be done. From what I've read on the forums, I think I have the right parts. I already got the old one out. It's leaking a lot of transmission fluid. It's draining. Here's the old one right here. This is a Borg Warner 1354. Of course, the electronic shift. How do I know it's a 1354? Because with it flipped over, you can see the tag here, and it says 1354. What am I going to replace it with? I'm going to replace it with this. This is a 1350 manual shift out of an 85 Bronco 2 with a manual transmission, 5 speed. How do I know it's a 1350? Because it says it's 1350 on the tag. I am not a Explorer, Ranger, Bronco transfer case expert at all. I read on the forums that this will fit. From all my research, the 1350 and 1354 are very, very similar. There's differences inside, little here and there. But the main one being that, that drive shaft yoke, where the Explorer has like the CV cup right there, the weird joint, this has the W joint. So it's a good thing I got this drive shaft. And the only reason I'm using this is because I had access to it. If I found a 1354 case manual shift, which they're out there, it would be a much it'd be an easier swap. I don't think this is the right shifter. I needed a shifter for an automatic Bronco 2. But this is what I got, and so this is what I'm gonna make work. I got a welder, I'll figure it out. But for right now, I gotta go to the auto parts store. I gotta get a new internal seal. I'm going to get a new gasket for the outside here. Get that shaft off and then I'll bring it back when it's in the car. Okay YouTube, found a couple more issues. This gasket that goes in between the transfer case and the transmission is insanely expensive. They want like $30 for this thing. So I just bought a roll of gasket material and made one. Should work just fine. And another thing I'm running into is this bolt right here. You can't get it all the way out because of the mount. Well, the tr the transfer case that come out of here uses metric threads. And the 1350 out of the Bronco has standard 3 8 bolts. I found that out when I was chasing the threads. So I got to jack, uh, jack this transmission up, take that mount out of there, and change this bolt out. And then we'll be ready to put it in, finally, hopefully. Real quick, YouTube, before I put it in, I was stripping shit down, noticed the difference. I got a speedometer hole in this one. So what I did real quick is I just made a, a block off plate. I'm gonna bolt in there like so with one of these, one of those O-rings sitting in there. Hopefully it doesn't leak. I don't know. We'll see. I hope not. There are professional block off plates you can buy, but I don't have one with me. So I might have to come back to this. On the original, that hole is there, but it just it just doesn't go anywhere. And if you're wondering that uh that hole is a metric, not a standard. 85, I wasn't sure what this is going to be, but it's a, it's a M6 by one. Okie dokie, YouTube. She bolted in there, no problem. Like I said, I just switched over to the, the standard 916 bolts, and man, it slid right in there. Now I'm playing with the shifter. I got the shifter disassembled, and it, these two two bosses on the transmission. This is a stock transmission. I forget what it's called. Uh, as far as A4, whatever the fuck, 
code they use. This, this stock transmission has got these two bolt holes on the side that were empty. And uh, one of them, they're, they're standard thread. The small one is a 3 8 and the big one is a 9 16 both coarse thread. And that bracket, man, this bracket just fits in here. No problem. I got it loose. And you can see where it's going to come up through the floor. Right there. Maybe you can see. It's kind of tight under here. But man, I didn't think this thing would come together so so easily with these Bronco parts. Everything's just falling right into place. When I was reading on the forums, there was two shifter types. I don't remember what they are, but this is the one I got. The A4LD. And I know this is off of a manual Bronco. At least I'm pretty sure it is, if I remember correctly. It's been, this, like I said, this thing's been in the barn for 15 years since that car's been gone. Okay, YouTube. The easy fun has stopped. I went to bolt in the bracket up there. And it, it's not going to fit. You prob, you might be able to see it. Yeah, you can. That sensor right there is really in the way. No matter how I configure this bracket to shift it, it's, it's just not going to work. And it's too far over to the center. So let me do some research before I start cutting that thing up. See if uh, maybe the other one fits better. I don't know. But right now I'm not, not too happy with that one. So before I call it a day... I decided to check the drive shafts. The rear shaft slid right in there, no problem. The front shaft, however, the front shaft doesn't fit. It's just a little bit too long, which I, I did read online if you're going to use this. I did read that you might have to shorten it an inch. There was some other talk about a shaft from an F-150 fitting. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look. But worst case scenario, I just get this shortened. Um, I don't know. I'd rather use the junkyard one because it will be cheaper. So we'll see. I'll come back when I get more parts. Okay, YouTube. Progress has been made. This thing fits now. Let me show you what I had to do. I had to grind that much material off. I had to grind off a lot of material. And with a, a washer in between this bracket and the transmission, it fits. It just fits. Clearance is tight. Now there's another problem. You see that slop right there? There's supposed to be a bushing in there. And when I'm sitting in the car playing with it, <laughs> when I'm sitting in the car playing with this, the, the slop causes a problem. So I'm going to have to fashion a bushing because I, I, can't, I can't find one. I was hoping to get a rebuild kit for this thing so I can get this bushing, these bushings, and there's supposed to be a, a rubber a rubber stopper right here, which is also gone. But I can't find a rebuild kit. So let me disassemble this and show you what's going on. Because I had to grind so much out of here, I laid a weld around here and I welded right here and then I just ground it down flat. Um, hold here is probably minimal, but, you know, it's better than nothing. And that, that was a nice hot weld. I don't think this is going anywhere. You can see how much I got to take up right here. I got an idea for a bushing. Let me see if I can make it work. I think that, I think that just might work. There's not a lot of wiggle in there now. How do you like that? Ooh, man, that took, that took quite a bit out of it. That might, that might work. I'll consider that done for now. Now, as far as this little rubber, rubber stopper here, you got a plan for that too. My plan is this. I got this from Menards. Just a little rubber. 
rubber stopper. Number zero size, whatever size that is. Figure just a coarse thread screw through there. I cut this down to whatever length and there you go. That'll work. I hope. Now this, this sorts out the shifter. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it in the car one last time. Make sure everything's cool. Then we'll start modifying the center console to um, fit the shifter. Alrighty YouTube, sitting in the car, it's running. This is the way it turned out. I cut the hole a little, little too big and uh, a little too far that way, but what are you going to do? And I got four high, neutral, and four low. She shifts good. The, the rubber bumper is, is a little soft. That spring back is okay. If I had to do it again, I, I guess I'd get another, a bigger one. She goes through all the gears just fine. Let me turn this off. I do want to keep my center console. So I think what I'm going to do is wear this on threads. I'm just going to I'll, I'll cut it off, weld on a plate of steel, move it over an inch, and maybe maybe put it at an angle. I don't know. I'm going to set this, uh, the center console in here and take it in and out a bunch of times and figure it out. All right, YouTube. I'm outside where the light's a lot better. Went ahead and cut a little patch of metal from when I cut the hole too big. Put some RTV on the underside to seal it. Screwed it down. So that's, that's the right size now. Hey, I won't tell anybody about that if you don't. Now, I was messing with the center console here. And when I put it in place... I got a light under there. You can see the shifter right there. It doesn't have to come over that far. I'm thinking I could cut this off right above the threads, weld on a piece of metal and move it over like an inch, and that'll get me good enough. So let's give that a try. Okay, YouTube, I got the center console in. I got it cut. I got it where it, I got it where it needs to be, and I'm just about done. I took some pictures along the way. I didn't film it. Because it's just a slow process. Going back and forth, measure, cut, measure, cut. Fit, you know, I didn't want to film all that. So those pictures are scrolling through right now of what I had to do to the shifter. And how much I had to cut out of the console. And yada, yada. But you can see the boot in there. How much of it protrudes inside. I cut a little too much out right there. And I still got to trim the carpet a little more right here. But it's coming together. I'm going to finish putting the center console in, put that kick panel back on. The factory four-wheel drive computer lives back there. I just left it in there. I left it hooked up. I didn't touch anything. I'm just going to put the kick panel back on and just leave it there. So that's how you put a manual transfer case in a second-gen Explorer. At least that's how I did it. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Peace. Good news, everyone. I found a front drive shaft. This is from an 87 Ranger manual transmission. But you need a manual transmission shaft. This is from an 87, like I said. I don't, I don't know the year range that fits. But you can see that it's just a little bit shorter. And this guy ought to slide right in. Fits like a glove.